Hey guys, so we've talked about cestodes, we've talked about trematodes. Here in Hellman's Park 2, we're going to be talking about nematodes, or the round ones. So let's go ahead and scroll down to them. Features life cycles of the roundworms, or the nematodes. Parasites to almost all invertebrates, and they have a number of reproductive strategies, so they don't just do one thing. We've seen the first one, where the intestinal nematodes shed their eggs out through the feces. The feces get on food and, and, and water, and then the eggs are consumed in the food, contaminated food or water. We've seen that one. Next, we've got some intestinal nematodes that release their eggs in feces to specifically get them onto soil. They want to get it onto soil because then what happens is the larva hatch out of the egg and the larva can penetrate into the skin, typically into a bare foot. And then they make it into the body and then into the intestine and then they reproduce and they give eggs and they start the whole cycle again. The next stage we've seen, or the next type we've seen, again, the nematodes are going to insist in muscles or tissues, and then um, we are going to eat the raw undercooked meat and actually ingest those sticks. Now, mosquitoes can also transmit nematodes. When they have taken a meal from an infected host, the next person that they take a meal from, they can actually infect. They actually inject some fluids into the humans before they take out the blood and they inject the nematodes into our bloodstream. Now remember that only asex uh, sorry, adult sexually mature stages can be found in the definitive host. Let's look at hookworms. And Psilostoma duodenal and Nicator americanus are two types of hookworms, and we, they are seen in the United States. The lar larva hatch in the soil, and then bore through the skin, typically the foot, because we're walking around barefoot, migrate to the small intestines. They cause mucosal damage by two things, by actually penetrating the intestines and causing those holes, and also the gripping of the intestines can also cause mucosal damage. We also tend to see anemia with these hookworms because remember they're digesting or taking in our nutrients and they take in iron and don't leave enough for us. In children some of the symptoms we see is intellectual, cognitive, and growth retardation. We also tend to see lethargia. They're lethargic, they're tired all the time, they don't want to do anything, they don't want to do what they normally do. They lose interest in hobbies. 100 million people are infected per year with this, and we tend to treat with mabendazole, which is our basic catch-all for most nematodes. Again, here's an image of a hookworm actually hanging on to the intestinal mucosa. You can see how this can damage it, especially if it's ripping on it and then potentially tearing it. Ascaris lumbricoides causes ascariasis, transmitted by ingesting the ascaris eggs in contaminated food or water. These guys have an interesting cycle in the body. So, you ingest it, it gets down into the small intestines, the duodenum. It exits the duodenum and gets into your bloodstream. Now, you're going to say, why does it do that? Well, it makes it to the liver or the heart and then to the pulmonary um area, the pulmonary lungs, and gets into the alveoli. If you remember your lungs, the alveoli are going to be those little bags that you gas exchange, and that's where they tend to grow. The um, About three weeks later, the larvae are coughed up and re-swallowed, so you tend to have a mucus cough, and then you tend to swallow it back down, and that's got the larvae in it. The second time they're swallowed, they return to the small intestines where then they actually mature as adults. And we have males and females. They mate. The females can produce over 200,000 eggs per day for a year. That's a ton of eggs. And then again, it's released into the feces. 
and then onto the soil. After about two weeks, they become infectious. Now, these can stay infectious and persist in the soil for centuries and longer and longer. So they're hardy little things. Again, treatment is mabendazole, as I've said before. Trichinella uh, viral, viralisis, viralisis. Trichinella viralisis. I've added an on there somewhere, but just bear with me. Okay, starts in a pig. Uh, we get into the, it invades the pig's intestinal wall, and it escapes and into the muscles and forms a cyst. Humans ingest it by eating the undercooked meat. It pops out of our intestines and finds somewhere into our muscles to actually also form a cyst. Now you're going to wonder how it gets back to the pig since the pig doesn't eat us. Well, on a lot of farms, unfortunately, the pieces of the pig that are not used, that, are, um, that aren't used in selling, are actually ground back up into the feed and fed back to the animal. So this is how this life cycle tends to persist. Enterobius vermicularis, commonly known as pinworm. So much easier to say. Most common in the United States, typically in children, and especially young children. Um, the humans are the only host, and it's going to be an Fecal to oral contamination. Female pinworms deposit eggs in the anus. It can be an asymptomatic infection, but you can also have intense perennial itching. Your booty itches. And that can be the main symptom. We tend to see children a lot, uh, have this um, a lot, and it's when they're going to be scratching their rear a whole lot. So if you see your younger brother or uh, sister, typically under the age of five, scratching their rear a lot, you may want to look into it a little bit more. Um, again, when they scratch their bottom and then later on handle food, it's a fecal to oral contamination and it starts the cycle again. Mabendazole is what we're going to use to treat it. Wolfgaria bancroftii, my favorite. Filari uh, filarial nematode causes filariasis, infects the lymphatic system or the subcutaneous tissue. Lymphatic system is going to be your fluid exchange system. When your hand swells, when your leg swells, when your foot swells, all that fluid is brought to that area by your lymphatic system. So the lymphatic system brings the fluid and then takes it away. Transmission is typically done by female mosquitoes. Again, mosquitoes ingest the immature forms called microfilariae when taking a blood meal from an infected host. Then when they come back to the next host, they transmit this parasite back into the human on its next meal. Wolkeraria bancroftii um, has multiple names. We've got the lymphatic filariasis which is the disease, that it can be asymptomatic for years. Again, numbers is the key thing. Um, what then, once we get huge numbers, we see acute symptoms, and we develop into due to lymphatic dysfunction. Y'all might have heard of elephantitis, but we actually, it's actually pronounced elephantiasis due to this I and this A. And as a, what happens is the worms actually get into those uh, the lymphatic vessels and clog them up so the fluids can go into a portion of the um, appendage but then they can't get them out. So cutaneous and subcutaneous tissues enlarge from the fluids going in but they can't get out so they harden. And this is, um, again, the lymphatic system is not working and cannot retrieve that fluid. This typically occurs in lower extremities. We have seen it in arms. We have seen it in upper extremities. But it's true. Mostly we see them in the legs and lower extremities. Um, prevention relies on avoiding mosquitoes, mosquito nets, off, 
And we typically don't see this in the United States. Again, this is other countries with less hygienic areas. Okay, key features of helminthic parasites of humans. Huge table. Wonderful table. Take down the table. I'm even enlarging the table so that you can see the table and have the table. You'll want to take down the table so that you can use it on your um, your assessment, your lab assessment, when I give you the five individuals with diseases. These would be great to add to your table that you are turning in Friday. This is where I'm going to leave you all. I hope you all have had a good time, and I will talk to you all later.